Fast emerging as China's biggest enemy, India is taking matters in its own hands in the Indo-Pacific and it is shooing China away. The Eastern Ladakh military standoff and the Galwan Valley bloodbath is one misadventure that the Chinese People's Liberation Army and the Chinese Communist Party will regret for years to come. The military escalation has permanently dented Sino-Indian relations and New Delhi is fast emerging as China's nemesis. India has started taking matters in its own hands when it comes to containing China in the Indo-Pacific. India is at the core of the Quad and has shown hints of inviting the Australian Navy as a permanent participant in the Malabar annual Navy exercise. New Delhi is also persuading Russia to be more involved in the Indo-Pacific and pursue its own interests. And most importantly, it is taking up the leadership role in the South China Sea, which should push ASEAN to be more aggressive against a hawkish Beijing. For starters, India is sending a strong message to China by engaging with Australia in the Malabar Navy exercise that presently consists of India, Japan and the US as permanent members. This year, the Quad shall be meeting at the Bay of Bengal, very close to the Malabar Strait, a choke point that India and its allies can block if and when China provokes them. While the Quad could be coming together very soon, it is India which is showing the potential to take up the leadership role at a regional level. New Delhi is the key player when it comes to containing Beijing in the Indian Ocean. And now India has also rejected China's illegal and expansionist claims in the South China Sea that go deep into international waters. Chinese claims are in clear violation of international law and India has made sure it states that. India maintains that these are global commons and advocates freedom of navigation and overflights. India is actually doing what the Association of Southeast Asian Nations should be doing. It is the ASEAN countries like Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei and Indonesia who directly face Chinese belligerents in the strategic waterways. ASEAN statements on the issue are mostly mild and do not offer great help in containing China geostrategically. ASEAN countries are more or less reliant on American pressure and firepower in the South China Sea. However, New Delhi's rejection of illegal Chinese claims should push the regional intergovernmental organization. In fact, in what can be described as a departure from the soft ASEAN policy on China, the organization has recently reaffirmed that the 1982 UNCLOS is the basis for determining maritime entitlements, sovereign rights, jurisdiction and legitimate interests over maritime zones. Also, India is pushing Russia to participate more directly in the Indo-Pacific. The Indian envoy to Russia, D.B. Venkatesh Verma, has said that India wants Russia to be more involved in the Indo-Pacific and that Moscow should look towards its own interests in the region, which will create a mutual basis for cooperation. India is using all its political heft to push against China in the Indo-Pacific. Russia formally claims that the Indo-Pacific is an artificial concept that is divisive and aims to contain China. But New Delhi understands that this is only a part of Moscow's axis of convenience with China. The Kremlin is not unaware of the real politic and does understand the importance of the Indo-Pacific strategy and the threat that China poses to Russia itself. There are interests that Russia wants to pursue in the Indo-Pacific, such as the chennai vladivostok Sea Route. The Sea Link passes through the South China Sea and connects the Russian Far East to India. China has laid its eyes on the resource-rich Russian Far East and has in fact informally staked claim on Vladivostok itself. The Sea Link is a common ground between India and Russia in the Indo-Pacific. The US, on the other hand, remains the force that weighs down China in the region. Recently, the Trump administration has sent a guided missile destroyer into the disputed South China Sea waters along the USS Ralph Johnson, which is further bolstered by two supercarriers, the USS Ronald Reagan and the USS Nimitz. Together, the Quad and ASEAN can keep China in check and India is making sure all stakeholders unite to ensure the same.